Hey guys, welcome back to MacMerlin. This is the programming tutorial for the KBP V60 Type R Polestar. If you haven't seen my review of that keyboard, check it out on the top left. While a lot of what I talk about here is applicable to other TMK compatible keyboards, I'm specifically going to address the Polestar and use the tools that were provided by KBP. We're going to go through the manual provided and try what I think works much better, especially if this is your first time programming one of these keyboards. I've put links in the description to all the files we'll be using. This tutorial assumes that you have a basic understanding of what function layers are. If you want to learn more about TMK, I've also provided links for that. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. The manual has undergone several revisions. I believe I have the latest one as KBP just sent this to me a little over a week ago. Step one, download the TKG toolkit by following this Dropbox link. So hold on to this downloaded file for now and also prepare a second keyboard. It, it doesn't need to be mechanical. All right, so step two, you wanna open up Zadig or Zadig, however you pronounce it. Then you want to reset your Polestar. And then go to options, or actually check to see if there's anything in the drop down bar. If there's nothing, go to options, list all devices. And make sure it finds the ATM32U4DFU. Basically, if you have never done this before, this will say install driver rather than reinstall driver. So just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to hit reinstall driver. Driver was installed successfully. If you see the same message, you're all done. Close Zadig, and I would recommend unplugging and plugging back in your Polestar. Okay, after the drivers have successfully installed, go to step four and follow the link provided. It's the keyboard-layout editor link. So examining the displayed keyboard, you'll see that KBP makes the top legend the base layout and the front legend on a different layer. So you can see using the W as an example, you see the W and up. This is the KBP V60 Type R Polestar default layout. If you're not there already, click the Raw Data tab. Copy and paste the information in the text box. You'll notice that there are several function keys labeled FN1 all the way through FN10 and an FN0 as the top legend. Excluding the FN0, these are all used to control the Polestar specific functions, which we will get to in just a bit. So click on the raw data tab and copy all the raw data provided. Next, go to step six. You don't necessarily have to go to that particular address, but tkg.io works just fine. All right, so when you're already at kai.tkg.io, Verify that the keyboard selected is the Fantastic 60 and make sure your layer mode is set to simple. There are other modes available, but for this part of the tutorial, we're only going to stick with simple. Copy and paste your layout. And click outside the text box and you should get a bunch of different options under the FN menu. You'll notice that this section doesn't quite match up with what the manual says. You're going to want to copy all of this to match the default layout. So let's say FN1 through FN3 are backlight action, toggle, decrease, increase, and the FN4 through FN10 are all built-in functions. So let's all set it to built-in functions right now. And what did the manual say? 
it's RGB step, then increase, decrease, increase, decrease, RGB step, color increase, oops, color increase, decrease, increase, decrease. And you want R, G, and B. All right, when you have all of that set, hit the download.eep file button. And there we go, it looks like it's downloaded. All right, let's refer back to the manual and it says step 10, go to toolkit windows, this folder, and drag the EEP file into reflash.bat. So what we actually just did is the default layout and it's what's included in that kit that you just downloaded. Just wanted to show you how to go and remake that. So the next step is to take the file that you just made and drag it over to Reflash. And you should get TKG Toolkit. Do you want to continue? Yes or no? So this is where you plug in another keyboard actually. If you've done the Zadig part correctly, all you have to do at this point is once again hit your reset button and click yes and it should work. All right, success. It says press any key to continue. So now I would unplug and replug the KBP V60. And verify that all the keys work as intended. So far so good. Not sure if you guys can hear my typing there. Oh, you can definitely hear that. <laughs> okay. You're now done programming or reprogramming the stock firmware. Now here's where I wanna change things up a little bit. Steps four through seven, obfuscate the layer key definitions. I do not use any of the four bottom right hand modifier keys, such as the right shift, right win. And in previous KBP V60 firmware, they allowed a user to toggle those into arrow keys. They don't have them in the default layout and I want them. So here's what we're going to do. All right, so we're gonna go back into keyboard layout editor and you know, just do a preset, check your default 60%. And I actually already have all my key maps written out. So all I really have to do is click on raw data and copy and paste what I've already previously done. And voila. Okay. Okay. So this is my default layout. Nothing special. It's your typical 60%. And I have F and zero where alt normally would be. So this actually matches the keycaps on the KBP V60. Now this will be layer zero. On layer one, I'll have something similar so let's let's get rid of all this raw data. Copy and paste. And there we go. Well, once again, this also matches the default KBP V60 layout. But you'll see one exception. The space bar is labeled FN11 because I want to be able to hold FN0, which would activate layer one. And then I would hit FN11 to toggle my arrow keys, which I'll be putting over here. And this is where the third one comes in. Oops, not that one. There we go. Up, down, left, and right. So if you don't put anything on, on the keys, they just become transparent. So now we're gonna go back to tkg.io and make sure your keyboard is Fantastic 60 again. And this time, instead of simple, you'll pick layer mode normal and the number of layers should be three. So once again, I'll just copy and paste all my pre-made information. You'll hit that, bam. 
Layer one for all the and finally the arrow keys. And once again, you'll hit the function row. So you want this to be pretty much exactly the same as stock. And for this one, FN11, which I put on the space bar, this is going to be set to toggle. Here we go. And the layer I want to be toggled would be layer two. And looks like, okay. So if you have any errors, this will flash red or its border will be red and these will be red as well. But looks like I, I have no issues. So I can just download the .eep file. Click download and it'll be keymap2.eep. There are other ways to do this. You can even download a, a, a C file. You can even download a C file. So what's the purpose of this C file that I just downloaded? It's for if you don't want to use the any of the tools that KBP provided, you can always go using the, the regular TMK way. All right, so the rest of the instructions should be the same as what I just talked about earlier. I now have a new .eep file. So take this file and once again, drag it over to reflash. After all is said and done, I would highly recommend testing every single key on your keyboard just to make sure it does what you want. I hope that was helpful for all of you. If there are any questions, please make sure to comment down below and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Once again, this is Mac Merlin. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.